This man right here is terrifying the NBA. Victor rolling to the bucket. Oh, oh. authority over Jacob. Count the basket and the foul. This is Victor Wembanyama, and if you didn't know, he's one of the tallest players in league history. Guys like him should be hanging out in the paint, waiting for his teammates to lob in the ball, or just getting out of the way of the real hoopers. Oh, crossover, pull up, cook them in forte! But on this play in the home opener of the 2024 NBA season, Wemby is initiating the Spurs offense, almost like he's the franchise point guard. Victor catches the ball near half court, creates a little bit of space, sees his defender Dylan Brooks drop beneath the drag screen, and pulls up for a logo three. Cash. This is absurd. Since when do seven foot four centers shoot logo threes like they're Steph Curry? Are we witnessing the future of the NBA right now? How good can Victor Wembenyama be this year actually? We know he's a project in development, but are we talking league MVP levels good? When you talk about a guy that's arguably, he's gonna be the best player on both ends of the floor in the next two years. He's, he's generational already. I have a rule that I do not put a ceiling on Victor Wembanyama. Now, the NBA media wants you to believe all the hype, but I wanna know the truth. So we're gonna find out what's really going on in San Antonio with Wemby, with CP3, and the Spurs' genius plan to take over the NBA. Let's be honest. Last year, the Spurs plan with Victor Wembanyama really didn't make any sense. Coach Popovich ran all these weird lineups, put Wemby in all sorts of crazy roles and positions, and it seemed like he refused to run a simple pick and roll on the offensive end. Spurs fans were pulling their hair out just trying to watch the game. And because of all this change, Victor got off to a slow start, averaging only 19 points and 10 rebounds in his first 20 games. Do you remember the media at the time? There was a lot of harsh criticism of Victor. He's too skinny, he's inconsistent, or Shaq constantly comparing Victor to Bol Bol. When Binyama handled this pressure extremely well, and when you watch his interviews, you can see that this kid has it. I'm not disappointed that I'm like, ah, like, that's it. That competitive nature that made MJ strive for greatness, or birth the Mamba mentality. Here's Wembenyama answering a question about what surprised him or what he knew he had over everyone else in the NBA now. That would be the, the competitiveness, you know, like uh, it's sometimes hard to realize this is already the highest level basketball, apart from playoffs, obviously. Nowhere near, but on the right path, you know, to becoming one of the greats. I love this mentality, and it's why I started creating the Champions Blueprint, a program designed to take you from wasted potential to peak performance in 30 days. You can start by taking the free mental toughness test. Not only will you instantly see where you rank, you'll get three tips to unlock your peak performance today. Try it yourself by clicking the link in the comments. So post All-Star break, the Spurs adjusted their strategy. They paired Wemp and Yama with a more traditional point guard in Trey Jones. Victor finished the season averaging 21 points, 10 rebounds, three assists, and three blocks, winning Rookie of the Year and finishing second for Defensive Player of the Year. Plus, the Spurs outscored their opponents by 5.2 points per 100 possessions when Wenbenyama and Jones shared the floor. Having a true point guard around Victor changed everything, and suddenly the Spurs had their blueprint for success. Jones, Wenbenyama on the move. So in the offseason, the Spurs signed one of the best traditional point guards of all time, Chris Paul. Hopefully so, 12-time All-Star Chris Paul joining the reigning Rookie of the Year, Victor Wembanyama in San Antonio. Now we all know CP3 has a history of making players around him much better. Whether it was when he was taking the Hornets to the playoffs for the first time in years. His short stints in OKC, Houston, and Golden State, or most famously, turning the Clippers into Lob City. Here comes Chris Paul. This summer, the media was drooling at the potential of the alien playing alongside the point god, and right away we saw flashes of their connection. In the preseason, on one of their first pick and roll plays, they do this. Chris Paul. Palendi, the first one. 
And in the San Antonio home opener, we saw more lobs and dunks, like this one off of a fast break. Or this one here in a traditional 1-5 pick and roll. This is unstoppable when you have a guard with vision like CP3 and an extremely mobile center standing at seven foot four. But weirdly, the Spurs haven't settled on this being their game plan or totally shelved their crazy experiments with Victor. So far in the first few games, we saw Victor playing at virtually every position on the court. Here he is at center catching the ball on the low post, making a strong dribble towards the paint before hitting Derek Lively with a drop step for an easy up and under score. Two terrific young players and scooping it home is Rembenyama. Here he is playing point guard, taking Clay Thompson to the right, only to stop on a dime and hit a smooth fadeaway jumper. Clay can only throw his hands up in the air after a shot like that. Then in the next game, we see him go off with hezzy three pointers, loco threes, crafty layups, dunks, you name it. My favorite were these back to back buckets from the top of the key. Not because they look nice, but because they are simple and impossible to guard. Of the game last night against the Grizzlies, Wemby put people in blenders. Yes! Players like Joel Embiid have made a living catching the ball at the free throw line. And I think this could be a huge unlock for Victor's offensive game in the future. Between last year and this year so far, it is clear that the Spurs are not limiting Victor to any role, any position, or any place on the court. Coach Pop will experiment with crazy lineups, playstyles, and strategies early in this season too, then hone in on what's working later around All-Star break. Just for reference, Wembanyama is averaging more three points attempts per game already. And it's a small point, but basketball reference now lists him as a power forward instead of a center. It's just taking shots in rhythm. That's the most important for me. I think I'm, I'm comfortable in <clears throat> every area of the floor to shoot, but in, at the same time, if I'm not in rhythm in any area of the floor, I'll miss. So just how good can Victor Wembanyama be with all these crazy experiments and game plans? If you listen to ESPN, he literally has no ceiling, and he can win all the awards this year. There, there isn't an award I don't think he can't win. I don't wow. think it exists. I think he can. He's he's favored to win any award every year. He's a different specimen. Um, we haven't seen anything like him, so I think he has a chance every year to do something special. Now, don't get me wrong. Victor's rookie year was truly incredible, but it's not the best we've ever seen. Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kareem all had better rookie seasons. And in their sophomore year, each of one of these NBA greats took another step. We are waiting to see if Victor can do the same. Can he increase his scoring, his efficiency, and most importantly, help his team win? Before Wemben Yama joined the Spurs, their record was 22 and 60. And after Victor and his incredible rookie campaign, they went 22 and 60. So how many games are they really going to win this year? 30? Maybe 40? Individually speaking, Basketball Reference projects Victor to average 26 points per game, 12 rebounds, and 4 blocks. Those are easily NBA All-Star numbers. So we're looking at Wemby's first All-Star team selection. But here's the kicker ESPN forgets to mention. Victor Wembanyama does have a ceiling. It's Greg Popovich. I talked about this briefly in my Joel Embiid video. The Spurs are masters of load management. They simply won't allow Victor to average more than 30 minutes per game, let alone 35 or 36. And those numbers from basketball reference, they're estimates based on per 36 minute averages. So what does that mean for MVP? No chance. To win MVP, the Spurs would have to be a top team in the West. And the Western Conference is stacked with talent, and there's no shame in saying it. The Spurs aren't a contender yet. And Wembenyama, personally, is a few years from MVP caliber seasons. You just gotta look at the previous award winners like Giannis, Embiid, and Jokic. But this is where I think things get interesting. Looking at all the potential in the Spurs' future. Victor's insane highlights, his alien workout routines, and his quote-unquote passive weight gain have sort of blinded us to some of the huge developments in the Spurs organization. Like their number four draft pick, Stefan Castle. Castle is averaging eight points and four assists in very limited minutes. But watch how this 19-year-old plays. Here he is with a great cut from the weak side that ends in a poster slam. This is him at point guard running a pick and roll with Jeremy Shohan. 
fooling the defense with a slick Euro and a strong finish at the rim. And here he is again, attacking the rim after denying a Wembenyama screen. He doesn't get the finish, but he gets the foul and is sent to the line to collect his free throws. Castle looks solid, strong, and fearless. Plus, like I said earlier, playing under CP3 is a huge luxury. He'll be a wonderful mentor to not only Castle, but the rest of the team, Wemby included. Jeremy Shohan is still one of the most unique players in the league, playing point guard last year, shooting with one hand at the free throw line, and guarding some of the biggest centers in the NBA. Don't forget about Devin Vassell either. He's injured, but he's got a great jumper and will be healthy soon. This team is exciting. The real prize, looking forward though, is the Spurs, not one, but two lottery picks for the 2025 draft. According to the analysts, this draft is stacked. Could you imagine a player like Cooper Flagg or AJ DeBancia on this squad? This is San Antonio's real crazy plan. Surround their talent with the greatest vets they can find now, so they can make a push for an NBA championship, not today, not tomorrow, but in five years. Then keep that dynasty going on for at least a decade. They did this before with Parker Ginobili and Tim Duncan and they already have their centerpiece solidified in Victor Wembenyama. Player who impressed general managers the most heading into Wembenyama, <laughs> heading into Wembenyama, sure, <laughs> heading into the season that is Victor Wembenyama. I mean, 77% of the league would start their team with Victor Wembenyama today. Now for the Spurs, it's just about finding out who's the other two NBA greats. But what do you think? Can Victor make the all-star team even with his limited minutes? Will Chris Paul's presence help the Spurs reach the playoffs or at least the play-in? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by subscribing. Make sure to tick on the notifications because my next Henry Hoops video is about how a fat and lazy slob took his revenge on the entire NBA. It's going to be wild. Peace.